Are you ready for Q&A with TNA? And get your minds out of the gutter, too. Yeah, Todd, get your mind out of the gutter. Whatever, man. Whatever. <laughs> Whatevs. What's Whatever. up, everybody? Welcome into Q&A with TNA. That is T. This is A. That is. Todd and Aaron from our success group. So hopefully everybody is having a very good day afternoon whatever time it is in your neck of the woods or when you're watching this maybe it'll be the middle of the night if you're catching team replay so todd how are you sir you uh, rushed home for this and then i ended up making it late so you're yeah welcome. i uh i totally um i had stuff to do and the next thing i know i looked at the clock and realized holy crap it's uh it's time to i need to get to the post office i got a show to do and we got this and that so i was gonna be coming running in here but i did find time to grab a frosty beverage so yeah it got too bad you know yeah i'm a little i'm a little uh upset by that my uh yelling for beer has not worked yet so um i may have to do that again i don't know what my eight-year-old's doing i think he's too cool for that now i don't know what uh, what the story is there so so do we um, just uh, need to get you a beer fridge in there uh i do have a beer fridge in at the uh the co-working space so maybe i should just go there in or you bed all the time have one there for the house i think that yeah so yeah. i'll bring that one home and yeah go from there so yeah, why not try to get so i can actually see the comments so Moving. all right speaking of comments valerie says she's stuck in the chaos of costco not sure she'll catch the live but definitely get the replay uh, i did mention that uh, she should stay safe and uh, bring us some toilet paper so we'll see how that goes yeah, I uh, actually, when we were at the store, uh, I don't even know what day it was, when we went over there to get our gas for $1.05. Uh, I think uh, when I got the brisket, it was, there was tons of toilet paper. I was, uh, nice. I was surprised. So, you know, hey, we got we got that, man. We got toilet paper back in stock. That's awesome. That's awesome. We haven't really checked. We actually done pre, we, we didn't hoard. Uh, I've always just bought it on Amazon in like a 60 roll pack that we get once a quarter on a subscription <laughs> and uh, um, so we, in fact, when when all this toilet paper thing hit, my wife was so cocky about it that she sent a sent a 12 pack to her parents <laughs> as, as her father's birthday gift because they were completely out and couldn't get it. <laughs> That's super nice. Yeah, that was nice, except for then I told her, you know, well, you better start using a few less squares then if you want to make it through this. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, for us, it's you know we run into that where uh, you know we have a big family in general. So you know when they started putting limits on stuff, it's like yo, uh, you know what can you do? We've got another friend of ours um, that they're also a big family. Uh, they've got eight kids as well, so there's there's ten of them in the household, and and I think they're right in that same age bracket where their kids range from I think four or five to <clears throat> twenty four somewhere in there, and they're all home right now. So when, you know, everybody eats, it's like four dozen eggs and, you know, 37 tombstone pizzas and stuff. And they're not hoarding. They're just trying to eat. So they have to, when they're going grocery shopping, each kid gets past, you know, the debit card. You Here's your here's your cart and you're coming up there and you're paying for the stuff in there to be able to get away with it. So, you know, hey, it's fun being a big family. Yeah, definitely. You, uh, you know, have to work things like that out. That's what, so you, you've got a, uh, what, a basketball team at least. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so, but then you have a toilet paper issue, so that's fun. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, it's pluses and minuses, you know. Yeah, definitely. All right, Sarah, checking in. Hello, hello, and hello. Sharon. Yeah. And Sarah, I'll take this. I need if you can send me more uh, um, spotted cow because I you can only get in Wisconsin, and so that means I got to drive two hours to get beer. So, you know, <laughs> if anybody wants to send me some, nice. And uh, Tanya, checking in. Tanya did. No, Tanya. Tenure. And also Jay. So we've got uh, the whole crew. Yeah. Kind of there. Here to play. Yeah. Dax is here. 
And um, Todd, you need uh, branded shirts. I can hook you up. Uh, I know. I well, the thing is, is I usually have one on, but uh, it got warm here today. I had a, a hoodie on this morning when I left, and it was a uh, it was a little chilly and, and rainy, and and then when uh, I. Oh, we're going to do this again, Todd. You're freezing what? up again. No way, man. There is nobody in here. <laughs> I'm calling these. These MFers are getting a phone call. That's for sure. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I've, I've got an awesome branded T-shirt. A good friend of mine uh, made these for me. So if I could just figure out somebody to get me an OSG shirt, man, I would be a happy dude. I uh, Actually, I have it sitting on the desk at work. Uh, <laughs> go because i've had some of that puff that was left over and i was thinking about doing that on it cool uh, but yeah that is, that is that is sitting there and uh it's kind of hoping i was hoping by now you know things were looking to, to kind of slow out and i'd be able to play with the pad printer and be able to have all kinds of fun stuff and it just took off like gangbusters this week so i really haven't had a chance to do much of anything <laughs> well yeah it's definitely uh, exploded um my uh my friends over at uh Pick the gift or getting in more orders than they can put out every day. So uh, trying to help them figure out how to uh, manage that. Because <laughs> For us, I, we're doing more on a, a daily basis now than what we were doing at Christmas. Uh, so it was, you know, it, it, it's weird how this is working, but, you know, especially now, like we were talking, you know, Illinois extended their, you know, their shelter in place order. So More people interested in getting floor decals, more people interested in getting signs and banners and decals. It's just, you know, hey, we're pushing everything we can for it and we're going to do, you know, make the money while, while we can because who knows when that's going to dry up. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, Michael says, uh, here for good, California. We shot a video now. So, uh, nice. in fact, I, I uh, went ahead and, and pulled up his website right there. Really nice. Uh, good stuff going on there. And I'm, I'm guessing that's the video in the middle. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can play it. Yep, there we go. Hi, my name is Mike Woolbright, and I'm the owner of Express Tees in Stanton, California. And I'm here today to talk to you about Here for Good California. Here for Good is simple. It's a movement that started as a grassroots effort in St. Louis and has come to California. We want California residents to throw their support behind a small business and entertainer organizations that make us so special. We want our communities to be here for good. How does it work? We feature a t-shirt design for any small business affected by COVID-19 that wants to participate. $10 from every sale goes to a struggling California business. All right. Very cool. Well, th there's a little bit more time left. So if you want to go over and check that out here for good California, that's, that's awesome. Oh, Great job, Michael. Feel that idea. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Very good. Good job on that, Michael. Yeah, Cheers. for sure. Cheers. Cheers. Um, Sharon, you are al allowed to ask a question. We'll, we'll, we'll let you slide. Um, so <laughs> am I, uh, I just want to know where to get plastic bags for shirts. Define plastic bags. Are you wanting probably bags? just uh, like the t -shirt, I guess is the thank you bags or the clear plastic you know bags that you're putting them in? Oh, okay, good. Yep, cool. Yeah. Or Sharon, I know there's probably comments down here. And then Sarah mentioned Uline. Um, <laughs> Sarah said well, we gave away a, a bag of TP and then ran low. So hey, you know, got to got to share share a square, right? Is that how that goes? Yeah, sure. <laughs> that's a cigarette. I thought. Uh, anybody have any good ideas on packing some shirts uniquely for frontline nurses? And uh, so we'll, we'll leave that one out there. Man, I am way behind on the comments. I don't know if we're going to get into any of our questions here, Todd. Whatever, man. You know, you want to get them all? I mean, because after today, we won't answer any more until Sunday, right? What is today? Yep, you're right. Yep, it is Thursday. So Sunday okay. will be the next Q&A. So, yep, you got that right. Uh, hello. And then, uh, Sarah, we only, we only have five kids, but the limit two on dairy is not okay. Yep. Definitely. And, and here's the thing. What's crazy is, so there's a limit two on dairy, right? If you don't know Sarah's from Wisconsin. They're literally pouring millions of gallons of milk down the drain every day because they can't process it and get to where it needs to go because of restaurants, schools, things that tr that traditionally went to, 
So they don't have the packaging and they don't have the transportation to get it to where it needs to go. And they're dumping millions of gallons. Meanwhile, they're putting limits on stuff that you can buy. You know, so that's one of the things I'm hoping comes from this is that that whole infrastructure will be able to be fixed uh, to be able to, to help that. Because we've got people starving of food. Meanwhile, we're tilling over, you know, hundreds and thousands of pounds of food every day. It's it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Michelle, good evening. Yeah. I, I, there's a lot of things that are a little bit uh, head scratching going on right now. I was reading an article about how uh, certain businesses uh, are getting, you know, the uh, PPP program and stuff like that. They're, they've been able to get it, but now they're having a hard time actually getting their employees uh, to, to come back because they're basically competing with unemployment. Yep. Which is crazy. That seems yeah. silly that uh, you, uh, you know, and, and we're not talking about like, you know, minimum wage people. Some of these things are people that were getting paid. Uh, I think they said in uh, in the Seattle, Washington area that people getting paid $30 an hour, it was more cost effective for them to uh, stay home. Yeah. Well, and then the other thing, too, is, you know, a lot of people are looking at this as, you know, it's, it's kind of like a paid vacation. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not working. I'm getting, you know, 60% of my pay, but I, uh, I talked to a other sign guys today and they're in the same boat where they couldn't get anything to qualify for, they, you know, just kept putting in, you know, information after information, getting requests after requests, nothing really came up for it. Um, they said, even with that, when they laid their employee off, uh, she was one of the ones that got the, that extra benefit uh, of their, a couple hundred bucks. She yeah. had, she's making as much as what she was making now. Uh, off unemployment than what she was working here. So she doesn't care how long it takes because I think it's like 39 weeks that she'll get that for. So, you know, Hey, she has no problem staying at home for 39 weeks for that. And, and he was yeah. even thinking, Hey, this might be the time that, that I move back home and, and put stuff in there. So I think, uh, you know, it, it changes a lot of, a lot of people things uh, because if you, if you're doing anything where you're going to be in front of people, you just have that. Are you going to you yeah. know want to risk yourself going out there when you can stay home, and, you know, make a little money. Yep. Yeah. But, you know, the, the flip side of that is, you know, I think what's going to happen, though, is is the folks that are ready and then, are, you know, I, I would be reaching out to folks right now that maybe we're, if, if you're looking to hire and stuff like that. I mean, there's going to be really good people out there looking for work and they probably are right now. You just have to figure out a way to be creative, to, to find them, make that connection, you know, do Zoom conference to kind of get to know each other, all of that stuff. But yeah. Um, like I said, there's going to be a lot of changes. And I think that's some of it, like, you know, this whole let's let's take this free vacation thing. You know, that's going to sort out the <laughs> well, it's the good from the bad a little bit. I think. It's like here, you know, in Illinois, we just got extended to, to end of May. Well, what happens if you're in one of the states that isn't extended, but school's been canceled? So now you've been at home with your kid for this and now they want you to come back to work. But I don't have yep. anybody to watch my kid. How does how does that work? So. You know, that's where a lot of that once school shut down, it messed up a lot of things because what are you supposed to do with these kids when people are going back to work? You know, yep. uh, we're running into an issue here where uh, they put out a bulletin that said, yeah, basically. <laughs> oh, they've God. Been, I think it was every day for uh, the last uh, two weeks. They've had to respond to some kind of fire in an abandoned structure. So, yeah, they just uh, they just, you know, you got those kids that don't have anything to do. So what's going to happen when everybody goes back to work? Uh, it's going to, it's going to be kind of chaotic, I think. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sarah says sending spotted cow reinforcements to Todd ASAP. Wonderful. Uh, Jay is imploring you not to take it off. Um, I think that's probably the shirt we were talking about there. All right. So, um, Valerie says I made it. Uh, yeah. Don, hello. <laughs> Sharon says, we actually bought baby chicks so we can have eggs in the future, but Hub says no to cows. Huh. All right. So chickens, we can talk about that for a second because, you know, we have an ordinance here where we can have chickens. I think we can have six of them. Uh, my issue is that chickens will only lay for um, like two years. And then after that, they're just basically no good. And so what do you do with a the chicken then? You know, you can't eat it. Because you know by that time it's a, a pet, and I guess they're not good eating anyway. So you just oh, you're supposed to say you can't eat it. Why? Yeah, I guess they're just they're not they're not uh, whatever they're not fed that way to be able to okay. be all right or something. But I mean, it's like feeding your you know it's like it'd be like eating your dog. I guess. <laughs> uh, all right, I, Todd, you, you're uh, freezing again. So 
No, I'm not freezing. Yes. Yeah. J Jace, I took one order today. Brand new customer that I cultivated in December at Hobby Lobby. Dropped 2K. So, boom, Good high five. Nice Jay. job, Jay. All right, Todd, should we get into some some uh, some questions here? Because, yes, you are, you are glitchy. So, let's see if we can get through this. <laughs> I'm just reset everything before I sat down. I know. All right. How, how did Aaron like Tiger King? Did Todd survive the exercise all week? So, Todd, we'll start with your side of it. I survived because I'm here. Uh, it was sore mountain climbers and burpees. Yeah, those are two things that do not go well with a fat guy. So that was not that was not a, a fat guy workout by any means. You know, it was somebody who was already in somewhat of shape that didn't have a bunch of fatness to try and lug around. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I survived. Um, it was uh, it was entertaining. Uh, it was definitely not looking forward to doing it again. <laughs> oh well, I was thinking about maybe restarting it next week. I will totally do it with you if you watch all of Tiger King. All of Tiger King. All right, so let's talk Tiger King really quick. Uh, no, I did not like it. Um, <laughs> it's just again, I, I I'm not talking down about anybody that likes it. I, I I get it, and I can see where you know it could contend, can suck you in. It's just it's just not my thing. It just uh, I had a hard time just watching the first episode all the way through. You know, I'd seen previews and and stuff like that. Um, uh, and, and so I know, and I've obviously heard about it a lot from Todd. And <laughs> it's, it's just not my thing. I've never really been a, a reality TV person. So I, I watch documentaries, but typically they are like, you know, like the Tony Robbins one or the, the thing about uh, eating, uh, eating healthier, stuff like that. I, I really don't watch much TV at all, actually. So uh, I, uh, I watched a Tony Robbins one about 12 o'clock this morning. Oh, was, good job. Yeah, I was like. I think I sort of vaguely remember that. Yeah, and it was, uh, yeah, it, it was, it was decent enough, you know. And I still thinking of that plunge. I need that, you know, that fifty to seven degree plunge pool he has outside of his house, you know. And I'm thinking, how deep is that thing? Because he's a tall guy, so yeah, is that seven foot or eight foot. How's that work? You know, I was, and he went all the way down. So unless yeah. he was, yeah, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that that's a, uh, and then all of the stuff that that he does, and uh, I mean, it's a, he's he's got it, man, and, and it's just a machine. It's just a machine too. The whole it, process. It, it, did you do the math to see what the revenue was over six days? I, I didn't. I'm sure I, I figured you would. So, fifteen million. Fifteen million. Whew. Because if it's six thousand dollars, six thousand dollars, twenty five people, twenty five hundred people went. You know, I'm sure, and that includes lodging and whatever. And you got to pay out on it. But worst case scenario, you still brought in a couple million for you know a week's worth of work. Well, and then they he had like the the private deal with you know with people afterwards and stuff like uh -huh. that. I'm sure. You know, because when I did the Jack Canfield thing, I mean, it wasn't anywhere close to that. It wasn't a, a six day deal. But, um, you know, we did the the VIP thing and it was an extra couple hundred bucks just to have lunch with him. You know, kind of. The, and it was lunch with him and, you know, 60 other people. So, <laughs> And then there was all the merch that was for sale that was there. So, I mean, it was, you know, that's, that's, that's OSG goals right there, man. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I signed up for uh, Train the Trainer. I still look at my... Uh, little event special price over on the wall over here and how much I paid for that. So, <laughs> uh, all right. So yes, Todd survived. I did not like it, but you know, I survived as well. So we're, we're moving on. We'll see if, uh, I don't know if, if I change the OSG challenge to, you know, remove the, the burpees and the uh, mountain climbers, I could maybe go in for one more episode of Tiger King. Don't uh, think I could do the whole I need, thing. I need, I need two. I need two or three. <laughs> I, need seven. I need seven. All right. Uh, so chickens are good for keeping your garden weeds down, and they will eat snails. Huh, cool. I did not know that. I learned something new every day. And um, you know, I had Sarah says, it's a train wreck. You just can't look away. I I, I get it. And I, But I, I definitely, <laughs> I'm one of those weird people that when there is a crash on the highway, I actually want nothing to do with it. I'm like, okay, just get by. I don't want to see any blood. I am like a, like blood and guts and stuff freak me out. So <laughs> needles, I, I like whenever they draw blood at the, uh, at the doctor's office, man, I, I pass out almost every time I get myself so worked up. <laughs> I'm just weird. So I okay. think on three occasions I've drawn my own blood. Just give me the damn thing. Let me do it. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No. Nope, 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 not at all. All right. Uh, are we getting through all the questions today or am I? I don't know. I didn't even, I came in hot and heavy, ready to roll because I had no clue. I don't even know what we have for questions. 
Sorry, I just knew we had some. I didn't know. All right. Were... Well, we have some. We have four. So we've got one down, and then so that makes it. I don't we know, we're twenty minutes. Let, let's get the next one. Uh, we'll we'll maybe try to grab one more and and go. Yeah. Forward, so. and then they can add it more. All right. So, uh, would it be okay to reach out to some of the members within the group to outsource some work, embroidery, vehicle signs, banners? Did, didn't we we do this? We did this yeah, one, didn't we? Yeah, we did this one yesterday. Which one? Huh? Which one was I not supposed to do that we weren't <laughs> gonna do? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> ah, I know which one it was. My bad. Yep. 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 All right. Let's do this. We did that one yesterday. So if you want the answer to that, tune into yesterday's. Go over to liveosg.com and you can uh, check it out over there. True. Um, yep. All right. Starting out with my website, what e-commerce platform do you suggest I use? Stripe, PayPal, Square. Well, for well, see, because that question threw me for a loop because yeah, I know. Gateway. My guess is is the the question. Let's let's answer it this way. Starting yeah. out with my website, what payment platform do you suggest I use? Stripe, PayPal, or Square? Well, and maybe that's not what they meant. Maybe they didn't realize that it's it, not. But that's how we're going to answer it. So yeah, but maybe they realized it was two different things. So we're going to give the correct answer for it. So All right, what, we'll do them both then. The answers you're giving are are ge payment gateways. So you know that if you're looking at true e-commerce platforms, because I said starting out with their website, you know if you want something built in or go from there, I'm not sure what you have there. Payment side, each one of those has its pluses and minuses. Uh, Square, I like Square because that's what we use. We use Square for a lot of our stuff. That's what we use to run our POS with. Uh, we invoice, we do everything with that. Uh, we have PayPal set up for our Equid stores, uh, and we have Stripe set up for any of our reoccurring payments. So, you know, we use all three of them. Huh. All right. So uh, when you say POS, some people might not know what that is, and it brings up a piece Port of... Sale point of sale, yes. So our register, the register. We got we got a sweet, sweet little handheld setup. Uh, love it. Uh, we were a beta tester for it actually. Uh, it was kind of cool about that when they said, "Hey, we're coming up with a new product. Do you want to do you want to get in on it?" I'm like, "Sure, why not?" Because I'm always up for a sucker. Uh, and it's great because it's it's probably not much bigger uh, size wise than my phone. I mean, of course, it's it's bigger this way, but um, you can do everything from that. Works Wi-Fi, so uh, it has printer built into it so you can print receipts right there. Great if you're out at um, vendor fair or anything like that because you can hook up to your hotspot, take credit cards, it'll take uh, swipes, it'll take slides, it'll take taps. So um, it's I really, I really love it. Uh, in fact, we quit using our big um, point of sale system and, and use that one. It was two years ago when we started having the dual registers during Christmas time. So I'd bring people up. And now we only bring the big one out at Christmas. We use that little one for everything because it's it's easier to sit down with the customer, go over stuff. Here, while we're there, we just bring the register to them. You know, they don't have to get up and do anything and just turn it around, go. Uh, we lost you again. We didn't. I'm right here. Okay. Well, you're back now, but <laughs> we missed the whole last part of that. Anyhow, I think you, you covered it, though. So you use all three. Um, and then what's, what's, so the square is what you use for your point of sale. Yep. Um, Stripe. Is there a reason why you use Stripe over PayPal for your recurring payments? Cause it was the first one I started with. Um, you know, it was Stripe or PayPal? Stripe was. Okay. Stripe was when I, with, I had that set up with click funnels and pulled it, just pulled it. It worked great everything through there. So then I just. I knew how to use it for that and just use it for that. And it just tied in perfectly for it. Uh, and then, you know, PayPal is, is, you know, PayPal, you use that for everything that, you know, that you want to. Um, okay. So you, you added PayPal because it is more of a uh, widely used. Correct. Tool. Is that correct? Okay. Correct. Yeah. Because personally PayPal, I don't necessarily like PayPal because PayPal is all about the buyer and not the seller. So it's all about the customer and not the retailer when it comes to disputes. Um, Square, I've only had one dispute and we sent them the information on it and they, you know, they're like, yep, you are 100% right in this. You're good to go with it. And Stripe, we haven't had any with it. So PayPal, that's where, you know, they're one that they don't have any problem, you know, taking care of the customer and, and not the, the uh, retailer. Yeah, definitely. And then you've got, uh, um, yeah. So I, I, I like Stripe uh, because it's a little bit more, you know, what I would call like a traditional credit card transaction. You know, it it it's, I don't know, PayPal 
you know, you feels like you're leaving and going to PayPal. Now, I know you can set up PayPal, you know, where it is actually like a full, full fledged and it doesn't even look like you're going to PayPal. Um, so I, I definitely like Stripe and PayPal. I've not really used Square much. Um, so we actually uh, use Stripe and uh, Kyleen has a, a mobile, it's got a point of sale with a little mobile credit card reader thing. So she can go to vendor fairs and, and that kind of thing, but not like a full point of sale system like you've got there. So uh, good, good stuff. <laughs> um, and then a uh, question from Sarah here to kind of follow up. I heard Venmo isn't safe for business. Is that true? Um, I'm not 100% sure because Venmo isn't Venmo just a subsidiary of, of is it PayPal? Is that what Venmo? I can't remember who it is, but um, they more for and, for personal use, though, right? Yeah, and I'll see if I can find this information again. But I, I remember being involved in a conversation where people were talking about Venmo, and uh, somebody actually showed that actually it's not even it's like outside of the terms of use, I believe is what they were saying to even use Venmo for business transactions. So um, yeah, there we go. Uh, maybe it was in, in this group here, but uh, actually heard that it's against their policy for business use. So um, yeah, I definitely go, go check that out. If, if you're whatever using Venmo. Yeah, um, Venmo does have a business tab. So um maybe huh, i wonder if yeah i wonder if it's, on board for it sure yeah yeah there we go venmo is part of paypal thank you yeah. our our epic producer in the background here <laughs> yes th thank you very much um so so yeah I, I i like both of those like i said i haven't used square a whole lot uh jay said the square mobile device is super sweet so yeah. uh i i don't think I honestly don't feel like you can go wrong with with any of them. Uh, no, you PayPal. go wrong. I think you go wrong by not having that. Uh, you know, we've taken more more credit card payments, debit card payments than cash and check. You know, year after year after year. You know, you're seeing less and less of that. And I think going forward, because of everything going on, you know, people are going to be wary about taking cash. You know, because just everything else, cash and check, it's just going to be debit or credit. Uh, you know, which is, isn't necessarily a bad thing. You just got to have those, in, you know, built into your pricing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's just, you know, add, add four or 5% to your, your pricing. You don't have to raise your prices, just sneak them up there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I, or obviously if you're, you're starting out before you get your prices out there, you know, make sure that you're adding, because what is it typically about 3.25% is what your uh, credit card fees are. You, what am I? Kind of, 2.79, I believe, is what I am with Square. Okay. All right. I got to, maybe I need to look into that more. <laughs> it's like, it's like 10 cents and 2.79, I think is what, is what it is. Um, you know, no monthly charge, no nothing like that. So, cool. Uh, um, yeah. All right. So, I think we've got that one covered. Let's, uh, there's two more questions. Let's, let's get one more at least, huh? Yeah, 2.6 is what it is. 2.6 plus 10% for contactless payments. Uh, so swipes are inserted. Other ones are 3.5 and 15%. So, yes. Cool. Okay. All right. And uh, Mira, hello. Thanks for joining us. And uh, I saw some other folks sneak in here. Janessa, welcome. And Richard, glad to have you along here. We're you were running late, too. Yeah, we were running a little bit late as well. So, but we're we're 28 minutes in. So let's get one more question, and then we'll we'll call it a day, and uh, we'll leave one question for Sunday, and hopefully, uh, get uh, get yourself uh, get a few more questions in there for Sunday too. Oh, okay. um, yep. And and Dax said so three percent. I Dax, I I go a minimum of three percent. I may you know give yourself five right. percent just to cover any chargebacks or, or anything like that, just to because you're gonna find that. You know, by adding five percent to what you thought your prices were, you can probably get more than even five percent from from folks. You know, you're going to find that your window. Don't get too hung up on you know, is it this percent and, and this? Your price should never be you know ten dollars and twenty eight cents. I don't think, in you know, unless it is a it really wholesale, you know, you're, you're shaving to the minimum, minimum amount that you can get to kind of thing. But for 
listing your prices out online and things like that, you should be, you know, nine ninety nine or or fourteen ninety nine or twenty nine ninety nine or those those kinds of things. So maybe go out there and do a little bit of uh, research on uh, psychological pricing. Uh, there there really is a science to to pricing that uh, I think is worth you know spending a little bit of time of of reading up on and just kind of figuring out what your strategy is going to be. So science for everything. Yep, exactly. It's science. Just like uh, traveling in time. Weird science. Yeah, it's weird science, but it's science nonetheless. All right. I just I just finished my last call for the day job. I'm ready for the weekend. What's a weekend? It, <laughs> it is getting a little harder to figure out what day it is for sure. So do you remember that old Geico commercial where um, the guys were getting ready for the weekend and the, yeah, dog. And uh, they were playing like the kazoo on their phone and, and, and app and stuff like that. You don't remember that? I'll have to, I'll have to pull that up. Um, it is, uh, it's one of my favorite. My uh, older son and I used to recite that to each other. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> so when she said, I'm ready for the weekend, that's the first thing that uh, uh, came to mind. So how about that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Todd's just looking at me like, are you done yet, dude? You're an idiot. <laughs> Geico, you know, They've always ran, you know, so many different commercial lines together, you know, between, you know, the, the gecko and between like the caveman, between everything. They've always, you know, had stuff going. So they've had a lot of stuff over the years. Yep, they have. They have. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy it. Like the, um, my younger son and I like the camel one, uh, Mike. Mike, 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 Mike. <laughs> okay. Yeah, hey. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll get stuck on that for a long time. Uh, Sharon, that would be a good topic, the science of pricing. Uh, indeed, I'm, I'm making it out. Science of pricing. Yes. That can be a whole, a whole, a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I really, yeah. And I've spent some time, you know, looking at that stuff. I've, I've definitely, um, done, done a lot of that kind of, uh, when I was at, uh, when I was at coastal coastal business supplies, when I started there, they were selling, and, and I don't remember the exact number, so if I'm off, I apologize, but I believe they were selling a case of mugs for $48.36. It was basically somebody took a spreadsheet, added their margin to it, and that's what went out on there. Um, as we were updating the website and getting it up to speed, I changed the price to $49.95. Mug sales went through the roof <laughs> and it was more expensive than they were before. I don't, you know, so I, I obviously didn't do a whole lot of science behind that, but uh, <laughs> I, it could have been that we improved the website of hair, but I, I don't think so. I think it had something to do with it. It just threw people when they saw a, a weird number like that. So, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Why? But there, there, there have been lots of studies like that, though, where where they do do things like that where they, they change prices, they put in caps, they do loss leaders and things like that. So we can get into that. That's a, that's a good one. I like that. So yeah, maybe a small business Saturday. I, if we want to go real deep, we might even be able to do that as an OSG training, Todd. What are, you, what are your thoughts there? Are you frozen again? Oh, now that's just awkward. Yeah, peace frozen again. All right. Sorry. Have you done a small business Saturday? I have not done that yet, Sharon. Um, not that I recall, at least not real in depth. So Seems like a good one. Um, okay, so let's let's get the next question, and we'll see if Todd returns to us. If not, I will uh, I will answer it, and we'll send him on his merry way. In fact, I'm going to drop him from the uh, from the screen until he comes back. Up oh, now, he's gone completely. So no problem. We can do this. I can do this on my own. I know I can. Okay. Next question is, what is the best way to create pictures for websites, for shirts, mugs, and decals? Simple pictures with iPhone or create props and take with Canon camera. Um, so my answer to this would be to take the best pic. So when you're building a website, the thing about e-commerce, the thing about building your website and things like that is customers can't touch and feel. So what they need is they need to be wowed by that image. They need to be wowed by the picture. Now, I know people that do just fine taking photos with iPhones, but if you have the availability to take really good pictures with a Canon camera 
I would do that instead. And the other thing that's really important is getting the lighting set up, uh, making it clean, um, you know, like I said, props. So even if you're using your iPhone, you need to really set it up. It shouldn't just be like, okay, I made this, I stick it over on the table and take a dark picture of it. You know, it, it, it should be set up, it should be clean, uh, it should be you know, highlight the product, take as many different angles as you can. The more images, the better, and the better those images look, the better. In fact, if you're not a photographer and it's not your thing and you're not really into it, um, I would recommend looking at, at different ways to go about that. You could, you know, use a, a service, you could hire a photographer, you could even go to like a Fiverr. There's plenty of people to do photography on, on Fiverr, places like that. Uh, another thing that uh, my wife and I found for her website that's been really cool is um, it's, it's a group on Facebook. It's called Let's Collab Professional Photos for Small Shops. And um, I'm going to actually see if I, yeah, let's put that up there. So um, I will put the, <laughs> Todd said power flicker, I'll be back. So, uh, <laughs> uh, famous last words. So uh, let me see if I can get this uh, linked in there for you guys. So you guys can do it, get to it directly. Uh, but you can go join this group. They, they do have some rules that you need to follow. Uh, but the cool part about this group is it's basically small businesses and photographers looking to um, work together. And he's back. Welcome back, Todd. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we were talking about photography. Maybe. Here, Todd. I don't have sound. Oh, all right. Give me a, oh, well, you can't even hear me anyhow. All right, that's just weird too. <laughs> so yeah, back to this group. So what it is, is it's photographers and small businesses kind of working together. The photographers get the um, get the ability to build their portfolio, plus they get your, plus they get your product that they get to keep. The small business gets really great photos uh, that, that they can get. So there's a contract and there's, there's sorts of stuff like this, but this has been really cool. Um, I may just pop over to Kylie's site real quick. So you guys can see a couple of these, you know, I call them lifestyle photos and, and because I think that's what they're called, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So like the ones here where somebody's holding that or, or, or some of these, let's see, they did a bunch of drinkware stuff for her. So yeah, all of these photos that you see, these first three photos that you see right there, all came out of that group. She she worked with somebody in that group. We sent them the stuff. Um, let's see, this one here, that photographer. And I don't know if that's actually her, if she's actually the model, I would assume not because she's a photographer. I'm model, you know what I mean. <laughs> but uh, the photographer's name, her name was Kevin. So that's, that's her mug right there, as you can see. So uh, yeah, so good photos are really important. Uh, to, to e-commerce. So that's the gist of it, Todd. What do you think? Um, so I don't know what you said at the beginning, but I'm going to say, yes, you can take good photos with an iPhone uh, because every year, especially depending on the iPhone, the camera gets better and better and better. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I, I said that. I said, you know, it's it's fine to use that, but the setup and the lighting and how you do it. I mean, if you can do it with a Canon and get even better pictures, then you're better off. So yeah. um, when it depends on the Canon, because uh, in fact, when this is before we went to Mexico. Corey was pulling out some of our old cameras because throughout the years, you know, I think everybody's now got that closet of cameras of stuff that you didn't really use. <laughs> and uh, I was like, this camera sucks compared to what our phone is. And it, and it was, it, it's like, you know, compared to, you know, remember spending, you know, a hundred dollars on a camera at the time. And now to think that it's a piece of crap because, you know, the pictures that it takes, but um, yeah, it, everything, technology changes. So uh, it, if you're going to use those as your, as your main go-to, yeah, invest the money and have them done right. Yep, for sure. All right. Well, now Todd's back, so we should go ahead and stop, right? Yeah, because I'm on this side and you're on this side. And now this is all weird again. Not Hello. anymore. Not Boom. Anymore. Easy. <laughs> um, Sarah says, love this idea. Applied to the Let's Collab group already. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's been cool. It's been, been great. Um, I actually think I got kicked out of it at one point, but I, or somebody, I don't remember. Anyhow, Were you <laughs> they, do, do make sure you follow the rules. Uh, maybe, I don't think it was me that got kicked out actually, because I wouldn't be able to get into it anymore. Never mind. That was a dumb <laughs> thing to say. But, but they, they are pretty hardcore about their, their rules and, and what you can post in there. So, 
Rules are meant to be followed. In in Facebook's case, correct. <laughs> All right, Todd. What else did we uh, did we miss anything? Um, I don't think so. What do you uh, What do you got going on tomorrow? What's tomorrow's show? Tomorrow is going to be part two of our oh, that's what right. the post pandemic industry looks like. Uh, yeah, we we as usual we were putting together the outline for the show. And we're like, oh, my God, are we going to have enough to talk about for the whole show? We get to it and um, we, uh, <laughs> we we get to the program and we don't even hardly get halfway through it. And we're like, OK, so now we've got part two coming up. So, um, Mara, the, the link she asked what the name is, the, the links right there in the comments up there. So it's 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 a bunch of numbers this is their group. I don't know why they didn't rename their um, <laughs> Sarah yeah, I'm laughing at her comment. What kind of pictures are you asking to have there, Aaron? It was not right. the kind of pictures I was asking to have. I think, I, I think I actually maybe I got uh, maybe I got my hand slapped and I didn't get kicked out. I can't remember what it was. It's but really like, hey, what kind of idiot has a group with numbers as their as their link? Why don't somebody just go ahead? <laughs> let's collab on that. Yeah, let, let's collab on that. But uh, yeah, so uh, Mayra, if you just go find that, it's right here. It's Facebook dot com slash groups blah, blah 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 bunch of numbers it's called the let's collab or something like that i can't remember so um all right and so yeah th that's what we're doing tomorrow is uh, kind of wrapping that up so uh the cool part about this is the people that come and listen to two regular guys we call them the regulators so the, the reason that the first episode didn't uh, get all the way through was that the uh, regulators were crushing it and we were just basically reading comments the whole time because people had a lot of good ideas a lot of thoughts so we want to kind of we talked about kind of some of the changes and now we want to talk about you know how we can kind of use those those things and, and what what we need to be prepared for and how we can move forward kind of thing so I'm looking forward to that. And then uh, Saturday, eight o'clock in the morning, uh, we are going to be talking about, and I can't, I had it and I just lost it. What the heck am I talking about on Saturday, Todd? Uh, I had it and I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see the outline for that one, so I don't, I don't know. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So talk amongst awesome. yourselves while I find it. How about that? It was something awesome and amazing. Uh, it, it's mind blowing and mind changing, life altering, and for the greater good of yourself, you should tune in. That's right. There we go. Exactly. Exactly what Todd said. No, but <laughs> we're we're going to be talking about five excuses to not have a business plan. Oh, and by the way, why they don't hold water. So that sounds like a great great one. Yeah, and and just a a little. Uh, Sneak preview. Uh, I have used every single one of those excuses, so I can prove <laughs> why they're not <laughs> why they're not true. So, uh, yeah, we basically want to talk about about business plans. Uh, you know w w how they're used, why why we need to think about it. Even if you know you're you're already into your business, you know, somebody like Todd who's been doing this for a long time, or, or you know if you're just getting started out, spending some time on this is hugely important. So. Um, We'll give you some some things to to chew on there. How about that? And then uh, we'll be back Sunday for more Q and A, as well as Monday. Yeah, and, as long as and we have questions. We need questions. <laughs> I'm the one that gets all testy about that, Todd. Come on. Uh, I, know. <laughs> I know. Sarah says eight a.m. does not work with my pandemic sleep schedule. Could you do it a little later in the day? Um, Trust me, I've I've wanted to, but we, we're trying to keep it consistent here. So uh, no, I, I, I used to do it at seven. So yeah, we've right. moved it back to eight. Hey, yeah. you get in there, you you kind of get moving, and you get your day going, and then you have an awesome Saturday. And that then you great. can party on Saturday night and sleep in on Sunday. Yeah, but you got to take a nap in the afternoon, man, because you know well, it's Saturday. Okay. It, be, yeah. If you're if you're going at eight a.m. You've got plenty of time to take a nap in the afternoon because you'll have everything done by lunchtime that you need to get done. And then it's yeah. nap, relax, enjoy. It's awesome. Man, I don't know what fantasy island you live on. That is not <laughs> how it works in my world. <laughs> well, I, I don't have 27 kids, so I've only got one kid that i got to just lock outside. And I That's feel... Right. Lock him outside. <laughs> <laughs> he seems to be okay. Dig a hole. <laughs> 
uh, I've given him an ax and uh, shown him how to use a chainsaw. He's fine. It's no problem. Yeah, I, I don't. I, yeah, I don't see a problem with this at all. This is yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I know it hurts a little bit on the West Coast. Uh, that is six a.m. West Coast time. So um, replay is always good, though. Too. So. Uh, all right, Todd, and then uh, Tuesday with Todd. Probably still getting that together. That's a, that's a long ways from now. That is a long way. Uh, it'll probably be, you know, it's going to be a cheerlead session for Wednesday because, you know, Wednesday we start our new training. So, you know, it's going to be a, a cheerlead session for that. And, man, that's like forever from now in internet time today. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's amazing, amazing thing. So, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out for you there. <laughs> Valerie said it was definitely too early last Saturday after Friday night's adventure. Yeah, I stayed up the whole time and still, uh, actually talked the whole time so you know it's okay i did fine i made it I, I don't even remember what i talked about but you know there, there was that speaking of that thinking about uh getting the band back together on may 1st for the the next cocktail party thoughts very nice i think that would be uh entertaining because that <laughs> uh, that's that's next friday right well it's it's uh yeah, so it, it'll be a week from this Friday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, next Friday. I just I had to think. Yeah, I had to actually open up the calendar on my computer. So. Well, because this year I'm already it's already upsetting me because Cinco de Mayo falls on Taco Tuesday, and you know now we're closed here, so the damn coronavirus took out Cinco de Mayo on Taco Tuesday. What are what kind of weird universe are we in that 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 happens? May first is Sarah's birthday, so she turns twenty nine again. Yeah, tw 29, Sarah. Well, let's celebrate. I, I know you've got uh, family time on Friday night, so uh, but maybe you can drop in for for a drink with us, and we'll uh, we'll raise a toast to your birthday, 29. That's fireballs, all. yes. Fireballs, Good and Janessa's uh, in for May first, so that's, that's yeah. All right. So Janessa will rub it in and get a pizza again and fries. Which you know what? In all my fat years, I I've never thought. You know what? I should get pizza and fries. And now I definitely want pizza and fries every time I can go to a place and get pizza and fries. It's uh, it, it does sound like a really good combination. I've never actually thought of it too. In fact, even when she brought it, it didn't make me think about it until you just said it. So we'll, yeah. we'll have to give that a, we'll have to give that a try. So, <laughs> all right, Todd. Well, uh, so let's see tomorrow morning, 10 AM. So that's 8 AM West coaster. So that's not nearly as bad as 6 AM, uh, 10 AM tomorrow. Yeah, or it's 11 a.m. on the East Coast. Yeah. Right? Yeah, 11 a.m. on the East Coast. There you go. Just moving. And uh, so we will be, uh, yeah, so we will be talking uh, post-pandemic world, in, uh, industry, decorator world, and what that looks like. So I'm looking forward to having that conversation with Terry. And um, we will uh, be over at facebook.com slash two regular guys. And then, yep. Uh, yeah, next Wednesday, Todd, what, what are we doing next Wednesday? Business plan. Woo! We're going to have yep. some fun with this training. Uh, this is one that, if you, especially now, depending on where you are uh, in your journey of your business, if you're just starting off, there's no better time than now. If you have never done a business plan, now is the time more than ever to, to get it done. This is another one of our great 5T series. Five weeks back to back to back to back to back. Yeah, that'd be back to back to back to back. Yep. Yeah, five weeks. So yeah, right. every day. Yeah, I had to. I had to think. Cause that's a, a lot of back to back. And I believe the the first one uh, is determining your why, right? And that's, yep. Uh, determining uh, your why. Yep. Yeah. See. Ooh. Well, we're, we're gonna. Yeah. And 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 that doesn't necessarily do it do it complete justice in in the title there. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna talk about determining your why. We're gonna actually uh, go through some tools. We're gonna actually do some some exercises that will allow us to kind of get not mountain climbers, not, those. not that, not the kind of exercises that Todd doesn't like, but actually brain exercises. Um, but then we're, we're going to take that even a step further. We're going to take that and figure out how to use that into a mission statement and, and how you kind of can start. Again, this is probably going to be kind of, I guess people would consider it like the most wooey, the, the wooey. people might think it's out there. But I'm going to talk to you guys. We're going to talk to you guys about why this is so important to do, because even if you don't plan to be the next Apple or, or you know, the next huge, you know, five bazillion employee company, having a 
culture uh, is not only good for internally for your your company, but also externally. So people can connect with you and know who you are. So no matter what size your business is, you need to have a, a culture, a why, kind of who you are. And, and so that's why this is always my favorite place to really kind of kick this off is because you get really in touch with what, what it is that is important to you. And then when you can get in touch with what it is that's important to you, it makes it that much easier to get passionate and excited about what you're doing. And that brings more people in. And it not only brings more people in to you as far as growing your business, but it also brings in the right people, the people that have similar values to you. And therefore you're doing business that you want to be doing as opposed to doing business with people that you just don't connect with and, and it makes it not fun. So, yep. Yeah. As you can tell, this is a, a huge passion area of mine. And uh, so I will <laughs> thoroughly enjoy this. And I am really excited to uh, get Todd's take around the whole thing. You know, Todd, Todd kind of keeps me grounded. <laughs> like I said, no, I get a little wooey and out there. You get a little I get, brings it back to reality. I pull, I think I do fairly well on the Aaron to English translation. You know, I, I, I take wait, you're there and then I can explain it to them. So then they're like, <laughs> okay, that makes sense. I get it. So. <laughs> what is that idiot talking about? Okay, so here it is. <laughs> here it I is. It. I, I didn't know I needed a translator. Let me get my this flow is chart. Cool. Aaron is here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I don't know if my feelings should be hurt or not. I think it's awesome I that I have a translator. So yeah, I don't know. You, you use big words sometimes. You know, <laughs> some people are, are not like, you know, are, are not like me and don't say, huh? Well, I don't know what that means. They just, they just nod and go along with it. And then they're like, I don't know what they're saying, man. I don't know how many times I've seen in, in various trade shows sitting there and, and hearing people speak and see, you know, have them use these big words and people, you can tell that they have no clue. They just get that glossed over. Look, what the hell is this guy saying? And then afterwards, you're like, did you get all that? And they're like, oh yeah, yeah. So so then we explain, well, what do you think, you know, like this way? And they're like, okay, that totally makes sense. Cause I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, man. So, so I should just have you there, you know, you'll have like the headphones on like at the Tony Robbins thing where they had all those people speaking different languages. Yeah. You can just, you can just do that. And so nobody actually hear me. They'll just hear you translating what I'm saying. Yeah. Cause I don't know sign language to be able to sit up there and, and, and do that, you know, yeah. but um, yeah, I could, I, you know, I, I can make stuff up, but, uh, that uh yeah cool i, I like it. it but you know it's it's a it's a good mix you know we need to we need to find find those things we need to reach out a, a little bit beyond ourselves but we also need to uh you know again base it in reality here that that yeah. is going to be valuable for your business and so i think uh todd and i do a really great job of of uh kind of batting that back and forth and making it uh, making it work for people so cheers to that cheers to that for sure all right, guys. Well, um, Don, have a good night. Thanks for joining us. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, one last one last thing, though. Beg one more time. Questions right there. Okay. Our yes, success group.com slash QA. Get those questions in there. Uh, what do you think it's Sunday four? What's your Sunday look like? Yeah, I think four is good for me. I don't know. Does that work for you? Yeah, yeah. I think I'll, I'm either going to be in the middle of briskets or rib or pulled pork. So it'll be a. Uh... I might be a mobile show if, if if my mesh network gets here in time and I can have a have an actual signal, even though I'm sitting next to it and the damn thing isn't working. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how his uh, we'll see yeah. how. Yeah. Hey, I've I've got a the the uh, wireless internet that I use here is freaking awesome. I'll uh, I'll send you the link to it. It's called yeah. Ubiquity. It is it is amazing. It's down in my basement. And I'm I'm as far away from it as I can be. And uh, on Wi-Fi here and getting awesome signal. I'm right here, plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh, <laughs> huh. <laughs> the ISIS day, man. You guys got to work on that. You call your friends. I can get an AK-47 to go off like no problem, though. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Wheels starting to fall off, Todd. So let's let's wrap this up. All righty. Let's do Thank it. Thank you, sir. Thanks everybody for joining us and yep, yep. Uh, we will see you back for Q and a on, on uh, Sunday, but uh, okay. don't forget to check out two regular guys tomorrow and uh, check out small business Saturdays on 
Saturday. Ah, that, that, was, that was a good one. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Cheers.